So in modulation, uh, basically uh, what I wanted to talk is, is uh, what are the different uh, modulation schemes that we have and uh, um, how these modulation schemes are used uh, uh, under various uh, uh, conditions. Uh, uh, basically, uh, what is the reason uh, that uh, the different modulation schemes will be used uh, and uh, and also we'll talk about the connection of uh, uh, connection with the spectral efficiency definition and then uh, um, also we'll from the spec we'll talk about uh, uh, the code rate uh, um, and the spectral efficiency and modulation scheme uh, uh, relationship so uh, the moment we say modulation, uh, what uh, comes to our mind, some sort of a constellation diagram, right? So let's say if we have QPSK, uh, the constellation diagram might look something like this. So apart from QPSK, what are the other schemes we have? Uh, we have BPSK, uh, we have uh, then 16COM, 64COM, right? And also we have 256COM. So now if you observe all these schemes uh, um, uh, are uh, uh, 2 to the power of uh, um, n, right? So th th there is no uh, 32 uh, form scheme available. I will leave to you guys to go and, ex uh, go and uh, um, research on this, like why uh, these odd numbers are not uh, uh, taken up. Only even numbers are uh, taken up. All right. Uh, so now, um, if, if we uh, just take a QPSK constellation, then what does uh, the distance between the origin and uh, the point uh, represent? So what does it represent? Maybe this will be like a 1 by square root of 2 plus j 1 by square root of 2. So it represents the power, right? So this will give you 1. Correct? But what happens in case of other modulation schemes? Let's say, for example, we will take, for sake of simplicity, we will take. 16 com. So we want to keep uh, 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 the power uh, normalized to unity. So if we take uh, um, uh, the power of the outer uh, or uh, yeah the uh, the uh, uh, element which is present uh, at the extreme, uh, that should be one. But what about uh, these things uh, will have, uh, uh, you know, uh, lesser uh, amplitude values, right? Um, this is very close to origin, whereas uh, this one is uh, uh, far away from the origin. Now, wh what happens is that like uh, when you transmit the IQ uh, uh, signal over the channel and when it is received, there, there would be some noise added or uh, 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 you can think that uh, there could be some Doppler effects or uh, um, frequency offset uh, uh, effects, correct? So based on this, what is going to happen? Ideally, you have transmitted uh, this particular uh, po uh, point, but now uh, due to noise, the point might uh, lie somewhere here. Let's say there are two types. Um, so one is uh, distance method. Let's say we, we will consider only distance method for now. So we would uh, calculate uh, the distance between these two and as well as uh, with the other ideal points. And we will see which is the minimum distance. And uh, based on that, we will say that, okay, uh, this is what is uh, actually uh, transmitted. Right? But uh, now what happens? You transmitted this, this only, but uh, uh, I mean, you, you transmitted uh, the point present in the first quadrant, but uh, um, 
due to some reason and the point uh, is going to present uh, here then after demodulation uh, this point would be detected correct so under this condition what do you say like the channel is very bad or uh, um, the impairments are uh, too much uh, high correct so basically you you can also tell that okay the, there is too much noise in the system A snr is not good uh, so we are seeing a lot of uh, errors uh, after demodulation but let us take the first condition only like uh, this uh, blue color that was that was a good con that, that was uh, actually good for qpsk because it detected the correct one maybe snr was not that much great but still it is a good condition now let us take the same thing to uh, 16 qualm now what happens uh, nah, I, so uh, we transmitted this point okay now due to the same uh, uh, channel conditions or uh, uh, the noise the point is present somewhere here now again you will do the calculations right uh, the that minimum distance then finally you will say that uh, uh, you know this is detected the same channel condition which was working fine for qpsk now when it comes to 16 qualm uh, it detected the wrong uh, iq sample or wrong uh, uh, bits and for this we say that uh, the channel conditions are bad we wanted much more uh, better snr uh, for this correct uh, so how will you actually um, decide uh, there is one more concept right which is called as decision boundaries so there is a way to uh, you know derive the decision boundary but uh, i will directly write uh, the decision boundary for this particular uh, uh, modulation scheme let's say i mean this is the decision boundary if the sample uh, falls yeah, anywhere in this uh, area this belongs to uh, one so if it falls anywhere here then it belongs to uh, two right so these decision boundaries uh, will get smaller smaller uh, in size when you go to uh, even 64 qualm and 256 qualm in in which case I would say that uh, your um, SNR should be very good, or in other words, uh, uh, your noise effects uh, uh, addition will should be very very small, right? Uh, adaptation features or uh, uplink uh, adaptive MIMO, such kind of features are there where uh, you know, depending upon uh, your SNR, um, um, the uh, scheduler will accordingly allocate the modulation scheme. We will move on to the uh, uh, the spectral efficiency uh, thing. So, in QPSK, how many bits are required to actually, uh, you know, transmit one particular IQ sample? So, two bits, right? And in case of uh, uh, 16 qualm, you need uh, four bits. Now, I think first we need to define what is spectral efficiency. So, spectral efficiency um, says that the number of bits which you can transmit per second or uh, per hertz. Okay. Maybe uh, this notation can be uh, you have to fix it, and we have to define the, the number of four bits. So in, in our uh, usual our uh, um, uh, usual uh, what do we say okay. uh, our, our OFDM case uh, this arts will be like uh, uh, we can say RE and this uh, 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 second means we can keep the one OFDM duration right so if we have the OFDM grid uh, if we take one RE uh, so this RE how many bits we are going to transmit 
that to define your uh, uh, spectral efficiency uh, your bits per uh, um, second okay so in like one second how many bits you are going to uh, transmit that defines your data rate which is uh, different from your uh, spectral efficiency okay um so if you take uh, uh, qpsk okay so what will be our spectral efficiency so spectral efficiency will be 2 uh, bits right dpsk means only uh, only 1 bit so like that uh, if you take 256 com spectral efficiency will be 8 bits will happen uh, in case of mimo okay let's say 2 cross 2 will the spectral efficiency increase yeah so so people say it will increase right now same re this was for one antenna so we were transmitting let's say um, 8 bits now the same uh, second antenna also uses the same same time and the same uh, uh, resource the parallel resource to transmit so this antenna to also transmits another 8 bits so in this case the spectral efficiency is uh, 8 into 2 so if you use uh, 4 antennas it can be into 4 uh, like that so your yes, spectral efficiency is 16 okay so that's why like in case of massive mimo mimo and all uh, we will have better spectral efficiency because number of bits which can be transmitted uh, uh, per uh, um, uh, unit uh, uh, per, per re would be more 